composer's protégés, Hungarian pianist George Sándor. Apropos of that music, we'll be hearing some Romanian carols in their original form very shortly, performed by the Madrigal Chamber Choir, a Romanian group directed by Constantin Marin. And following those carols, Maestro Marin's daughter, Dr. Noemi Marin, faculty member in the School of Communication and Multimedia Studies, will be offering some reminiscences of Christmas in Romania in 1989. But first, she explains what makes the carols we're about to hear so special for her and many other Romanians. For several decades, the communist dictatorship banned all works with a religious character, and especially those based on sacred texts. However, the authorities closed their eyes, so to speak, to the performance of such works by Romanian artists at the request of concert organizers abroad. Following the tremendous success of the Madrigal Choir on these occasions, there was a growing demand for Christmas carols albums. The authorization to release such a disc was only given on the condition that it should be distributed exclusively abroad to prevent, God forbid, the contamination of the Romanian population by the religious content of these songs. Just how hypocritical a measure that was is illustrated by the fact that Electricord, the Romanian recording house, used to receive orders for carol recordings from the Romanian Party Central Committee itself at the end of each year. The albums were meant to prominent members who alone had the privilege and gratification of listening to those musical gems because they had been previously immunized against religious virus. Fortunately, these times are now gone forever, and everyone can freely buy their Christmas carol CDs in the Romanian shops. The carols included on this disc are traditional songs that are usually sung by groups of boys and girls who visit houses in the countryside and certain town districts between Christmas Eve and the New Year. The singers would usually be rewarded with sweets and money for their well-wishing. The songs on this recording are special arrangements for mixed choir provided by well-known Romanian composers. Some of the songs do not even have a religious character proper, rather they recall scenes from folk fairy tales.
Armenian group known as the Madrigal Chamber Choir with a pair of Romanian Christmas carols. We've heard Santa Claus's White Locks and Good Morning, Christmas Eve. Both were conducted by Konstantin Marin, whose daughter, Dr. Noemi Marin, is a faculty member here in FAU's School of Communication and Multimedia Studies. Professor Marin was born in Romania, and at this time of year, her thoughts are often filled with memories of Christmas 1989, the year before she came to the United States and began a new life. Since 1989, I always have a walnut wrapped in aluminum foil in my Christmas tree. In Romania, even four years before that, no chocolate for kids, we were still living on rationalized food, sort of food stamps for the entire population. One liter of cooking oil, forget about extra virgin olive oil, two pounds of meat, including deli products, one bag of flour, rice, and sugar a month. Actually, sugar might have been two kilos. I'm not sure I remember correctly. As for the luxury products, such as coffee, chocolate, cocoa, or sweets in general, they were mostly hard candy available, looking really bad from emptied shelves. I remember one year, might have been 1988, I got a banana wrapped in newspaper. No wrapping paper, of course, or anything other than our daily newspaper for my daughter. We could buy oranges and tangerines after staying in line for hours in cold weather and again allowed to purchase two kilos, that is a bag of four pounds. Then you would go home and treasure your prizes, making sure you give your kids one orange a day, if generous, so that they can last for a longer time. So that you do not have to stay in line again for another set of hours in cold weather, freezing and praying that supply would not finish right before you reach the line. I, on the other hand, was lucky. For my parents would tour in Germany, mostly during Christmas season, bringing all sorts of little treasures like wrapped chocolates that look glittery and beautiful enough to marvel my daughter as a young kid, but also the adults, ready to lust together over some of these sweets. My father would always buy almost an entire suitcase of Christmas goodies that we would share with friends and family in little parsimonious pieces, packages, including wrapping bags. After unwrapping her portion of goodies from abroad, for a long time my daughter would collect the wrapping of small candies and chocolates as her treasure cards, like kids trading uh, here collectible cards, I think. That might be a good analogy. For my share, I was lucky to be able to share again more with friends who were never able to see such miracles, not even 20 years ago in a European country with a beautiful history of millennia and yet with such devastating and debilitating life for its citizens. I had Christmas carols, sweets from abroad, a family able to provide and still keep happy in the middle of all this. Lucky, really lucky, I always knew that. In December 1989, in Romania, because of my political situation, I was in the mountains in Sinaia, again in a nice place, at an artistic camp or village, where people of the arts could rent rooms in several villas and spend time there vacationing. Sinaia is a beautiful mountain city, called after Mount Sinai, with a nice monastery, a famous castle, a casino, and a great park. But everything looks gloomy when the heat in the room is rationed, when the food is somewhat sparse, and when the country is in turmoil. I took my daughter with me, thank God, to give her a little winter vacation and be able to spend some time together. My last weeks of December were the last vacation days I had to take in order to finish my free time allotment and hence become unable to request one more time a vacation abroad, which meant a possible defection. Complicated existence, difficult to explain all small details that make such an existence even more difficult to comprehend for someone outside of the system. The days preceding Christmas, my daughter and I, we remained in Sinaia, knowing there is turmoil in the country, knowing there are disturbances in the streets of Timisoara, all of this known from Free Europe radio news. The news were delivered by word of mouth, mostly, into the villas. The villas in which we were staying was the last one by the forest. When it became obvious that the turmoil is spreading, we moved to another one, closer to the city, sharing the villa with my father's professor of music, a gentleman I knew since I was born. He was 90 years old. Phones were difficult to use. One public phone by the restaurant, and of course, the manager had one in his office. 
My parents were calling frantically to make sure we remained there, considering safe for that location, then Bucharest. They were correct. What do you do with a little kid who wants and expects Christmas at such times? I was able to buy some apples, walnuts, and we still had napkins from the restaurant. We were not the only ones there. There was a couple and other families as distressed with kids, uncertain what to do, when days were rolling with more and more danger. To keep busy, I was adorning the tree in the restaurant with some of the glitter that management provided and with our own paper napkins. But then we became creative. My daughter and I started a little program, caroling for the other villas for a little so that we can entertain each other and adorning a fir tree branch we brought into our villa. Walnuts became quite shiny, wrapped in aluminum foil, the paper napkins turned paper angels, and the apples were at least visible temptations as food. I managed to get from the market some knitting tools for my daughter and a Barbie can plastic doll, uncertain of gender, but dressed enough to make it look like a real gift. After all, Christmas was coming. It is since then that I always have a walnut wrapped in aluminum foil in the tree. Five years later, I was able to do the same thing, place the walnut wrapped in aluminum foil in the tree together with my daughter. There were things that are indeed priceless. Walnuts wrapped are one such item. Christmas has always been a very, very special time for me personally. Magic, love, pain and happiness, miracles. Memories to share always in the same spirit of celebrating love and life. Gratitude remains the main place of the heart for Christmas joy. I love my walnut wrapped in aluminum foil. We all have our memories that make Christmas special, don't you think?